Father, quiet our minds. Jesus, come. Have your way in this place. Have your way in us. Help us to remember that you go before us. That we have nothing to fear. You are faithful. His rain came and went, blue, my house was built on you, and I'm saving you, I'm gonna make it through. Same rain came and went, blue, my house was built on you, remember what he's done. things, right? We don't want to do what God says he wants us to do because we're afraid of the outcome. But if we follow and obey his commands, he will always come through. He will not leave us. And I just want to get that in our spirit this morning. Remembering that when rain came and wind blew, my house was built on you. our faith in that rain came when blue but my house was built on don't you see you're still standing I'm safe with you I'm gonna make it through do you see you're standing when rain came and when blue my house was built on you are his warrior the rock on which I stand when 
for what he's doing you know I uh, as I was preparing this week I, I uh, this song was so strong on my heart and I really believe God will put an anointing on a song for a time period and I just want to sing this over you and if you are going through or you have anybody going through sickness or maybe sickness in your thinking or sickness wherever in your body I just, I really feel like the Lord wanted to do something right now in this morning, and I want to rush past that. And we're just going to declare that it can't stay here no more, amen? Sickness can't stay any longer. Receive that. Your perfect love is casting out fear. Because you are the God of all power. And it is your will that my life is here. Come on, you're going to sing that with me. Sickness can't stay any longer. We're getting rid of it. Your perfect love is casting out fear. What are you afraid of? Because you are the God of all power. And it is your will that my life is here. That's his desire. Yes, it is, and it is your will that my life is healed. It's your will that my body is healed. It's your will that our bodies are healed. And it is your will that relationship is healed. So you will restore, it is your will, my soul is healed. Reach my hands to the heavens. I lift my eyes. You're where my help comes from. I look to you. You're my rock and my healer. God, I trust in you. I reach my hands. I reach my hands. Come on, ask him. To my eyes you're where my help comes from I look to you you're my rock and my healer I trust in you I reach my heart to the heavens I lift my eyes you're where my help comes from to you, my rock, my healer, I trust in you. Mm. Sickness won't stay any longer. Church, his perfect love, it casts out all fear. What are you worried about? Because he is the God of all power and it is his will that you are here pain can't stay any longer his perfect love 
is casting out fear You are the God of all power And it is your will that this church is here And it is your will that this body is here Relationship is healed. Open my eyes, God, that I could taste and see how good you really are. That I could taste and see how good you really are. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. We tell hell, we tell sickness, we tell fear, we back to hell where it belongs not with me Lord I thank you that when you show up fear dissipates that we are in your presence it just can't be here it just can't stay Father I ask that wherever we worry wherever we fear that you would come into those places and you would heal we give you full access. If you give access to the Lord to go into those places where you just constantly worry, you constantly fear, you're concerned about, you're anxious about, give him room to come in there and just heal it. The truth is we live certain ways for so long that we don't realize that it just doesn't line up with the word of God. We can think things most of our life and think it's normal. That's why it's so important for us to know the truth because that's what sets us free to know the word if our thoughts actually line up with them I thank you for opening our eyes to the truth so that we could be free it was for freedom that you set us free and today we are so grateful and we bless your name There's not a week that goes by that I don't come up after worship and I'm like, I, I think my job's already been done. You know, it's funny because, you know, one of the things that we talk about a lot is, you know, when, it's, when you go through a physical trauma or you're going through pain or, or something happens to you, there's sickness, like we, we tend to dive into the Word of God like so much deeper, right? Like our prayer lives are enhanced, our, like our, we see God in everything at that point. And, and something happens when we get the answer to their prayer. It's like, okay, well, that, that battle's over. And so, like, let's go back to the way things were, right? Like, after 2020, like, that was what everybody wants to do, right? Like, let's, let's just get back to the way things were. Like, I'm sorry, but the way things were, like, they were not that great. Like, I'm just being real with you. Like, they really weren't that great to begin with. And so, like, this idea, like, let's get back to the way we used to do church. Like, no, like... I, 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 I love praying for like obstacles and drama because like it's in no circumstances that we dive into God. It, it's, it's when like all hell is breaking loose is like when we're like, Jesus, like we, we, we call on his name. I mean, rarely do I find, and I'm going to be honest with you, rarely do I find a Christian that's like just passionate on fire for God, like somebody who's going through trials. It's, it's hard to find, not impossible, but not as common. And so sometimes I think that as much as we hate obstacles and as much as we hate sickness and as much as we hate drama and, and all those different things, I, I think without them, I, I think our relationship with Christ would be so weakened. And it makes sense because throughout the Old Testament and New Testament and for the last 2,000 years, every single time Christianity thrived, it wasn't when everything was going really well. 
it was always when like like they're being persecuted they're being hunted they're being like they're being rejected they're being isolated they're being hurt they're being attacked and it's like just christianity blew up and i'm wondering like it, it, do we have to be there? Do we have to get to that place where everything is falling apart to call on Christ? Or can we call on him now in expectation of what he's going to do? And so I'm going to pray for us as we go into this word and as we prepare to read this text, as we prepare to go into this topic and this season. But uh, this would be the time we call on the name of Jesus. Amen. So Father, we come before you with the name of Jesus, your son, our savior. That when we try to speak and, and try to lift our opinions and our thoughts and our cares and our concerns to you, without Jesus, it hits a ceiling. But Lord, we know that with Jesus, you hear our prayers, you hear our hearts. You are here with us right now. And so, Father, for those with sick bodies and, and hurting bodies in the room and within the sound of my voice, Lord, I pray for healing right now. Lord, for those who are, are sick with worry and sick with anxiety and sick with rejection and just tired of life, Father, right now we pray for healing in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are your people and we love you. We need you. So, Lord, have your way in and through us. Lord, bless this message as it goes forth. Lord, take what I, what I have read and what I have seen, and, Lord, just, just use it to bring glory to your name. Lord, don't let me get in the way or hinder the message that you want to deliver. But work all things together for the good of those that love you have been called according to your purpose. Father, we ask these things in Jesus' mighty name. And all of God's people said, amen, amen. If you're new with us, we like to hit each other around here. So smack your neighbor on the way down. Say, welcome to church. Welcome to church. Amen. Amen. Woo. My job has done. I could, I could just pray again right now, and I have done my duty. Amen? No, just a little bit. I only have a couple pages of notes. She did my duty. We are one. The duty was accomplished in, in teamwork. Amen? Without me, there would be no sound. Let's put it that way. That's true. You good? Thank you, baby. So thankful to have Melinda and, and Joe back and Denise back and... They were up in New York, and like every single time we go up to New York, we get sick. And so, of course, they were sick, and I was sick, and it was, it was a fun weekend. But um, I'm excited. I'm excited for the Word of God. I'm excited for this message. Uh, the topic that was asked was, should Christians participate in Halloween? Oh, I know. It's like, oh, like, it, it is. It's one, of those, it's one of those topics where right now, everybody in here, you've already made up your mind. Right? Like you're either like, I don't care. It's not a big deal. I eat my kids candy. It's a win-win for us. Or like, no, if you put on a mask, like you're going to hell, you're demon possessed. Like the devil has a foothold in your life. And like, and I'm wondering, I'm wondering, and I have my own personal opinion where I stand when it comes to Halloween and, and Halloween-ish things. Um, and I will share my personal opinion towards the end of this message. But my goal is to to give you insight, to give you an understanding of the, the roots of, of Halloween, uh, All Hallows Eve, all the different names that it has. But um, before we get into it, I want to do a disclaimer. Okay, I'm going to do a disclaimer. Just because a holiday has pagan roots, I don't think it has to be thrown out. Okay, I'm going to put that out there. And here's the reason why. Culturally speaking, uh, something can come from a pagan background, have pagan roots, but culturally what it means and how we experience it can be so different. And, and for example, um, I was looking up different uh, cultures and how there are different things that you can do that we do here in America that would offend other nations, other people. Uh, so for example, and I can't remember all the places, but I remember there was a few that if I did this, 
Everybody think, what does that mean? What do you guys think that means to you? Like here in America, what does this mean? Good job. Like, yeah, like how was dinner? It's good, right? Yeah, uh, no, in uh, other countries, if you do this, it means um, down yours. You can figure out what that means, okay? You can figure it out, right? Down yours. That's what that means. And so if you were to do this in that culture, in that country, like you're actually like, you're, you're insulting them. Now, if I, if I wanted to say, hey, babe, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Like, right? No, like right there is perfect. Like right here. If I did that, what, what does that mean to you? No, but what does that mean? Come here, come here right? It means come here. In, in certain countries, primarily Asian countries, if you do that, that's actually a hand signal that you would use for a dog. And so by, by summoning somebody, by using your hand, like, come here, come here, come here, come here, what you're actually saying is, come here, boy, come here, girl, come here, girl. And it's insulting because you're actually calling them a dog. And so there's all these different things. Uh, for example, if you put your hand out, right, in, in, in our culture, it means one thing, and we've had different things throughout the last couple of generations. You mean, like, talk to the hand, right, or, like, or give me a high five, like, right? We all have, like, different meanings for it. But in other cultures, this is offensive, it's offensive, or it's offensive to keep your hands in your pocket. In, in Korea, in North Korea, there was a movie being made, and, and several of the shots were made with this gentleman with his hands in his pockets in front of monuments to the, to the leader at the time. And they had to go back and re-record those shots because it is co considered rude or offensive to keep your hands in your pocket in that culture, something that we do on a regular basis. And so I, I tell you that because the, the, the meaning behind Halloween, and, and I hate to burst your bubble, but Christmas and, and Easter, Easter the, that Easter, that idea of Easter, um, it, there's pagan roots behind those. And, and it's it, it, pagan all the way back. And this is history. This is not something new. If you Google it, you will find it. But, but you, there's a difference between how it began and where it has gone. And so not every holiday that we celebrate that has pagan roots needs to be thrown out just because of its pagan roots. This is my personal opinion, of course. But there are things that we can do to test what that holiday means today in comparison to what it used to be back when it was established in these pagan cultures and these pagan societies. So I got the disclaimer out the way, right? Yes? Do you all have my email? Do you have my email? It's on the back of the bulletin. Um, if you have a problem with anything I'm going to say today, um, please feel free to email me. We'll have further discussion, okay? There's a lot of information to discuss when it comes to this topic. Way more information that I can share just in an hour and a half long sermon. I'm kidding, not an hour and a half. Maybe 35 minutes. Maybe tops, 35 minutes. But there's a lot of information that I cannot share in this context. So I'm going to do a, uh, as much as I can highlighting some of the, the history and what it means culturally today and, and, and how we got from uh, the, you know, the early the early pagan roots of uh, what is called Samhain. It's actually the original holiday that was celebrated that is, has become what we know as Halloween. Uh, the way it's spelt is Samhain. It looks like Samhain, but it's actually pronounced Samhain. Samhain. And so this original Celtic holiday was one of the first holidays uh, to come up really after Christ had, had been resurrected and left. Within the first few hundred years, Samhain, or Samhain as, as it's spelt, is the, the origins, and most theologians and most, most uh, scholars believe this is the true root of Halloween. Everything can be pointed back to this, to this holiday. And so um, I'm going to read you some information just about it. So I want to give you just the idea of the pagan roots of Halloween specifically. And then uh, after I'm done with this, I want to read a text that I think can shine some light on, on our current culture and our approach to Halloween or whatever you want to call it, a day of the dead in some cultures or, or, or whatever works for you. But um, Samhain is a pagan religious festival originating from an ancient Celtic spiritual tradition. So it's a Gaelic word, and it's usually celebrated from October 31st to November 1st. Now this is going back hundreds and hundreds and, and thousands of years we're talking about here, that this, is th this time of year was a celebration of the end of harvest and going into what they referred to as the darker half of the year. And, and you could get spiritual on that, just that alone. Like it's the darker half of the year, right? Like, no, but let's just keep it like for what it is. It was a holiday that was celebrated towards uh, the end of October, October 31st, to November 1st. And this is something that was back in the early hundreds 
Um, as the Middle Ages progressed, so did the celebration of fire festivals. And so what they would do is, around their, their, their communities, around their cities, they would light fires up on the hills, and they believed that these fires would keep the evil spirits, the demons, and the witches, and the, the goblins, and the fairies away. And so what they would do is they would sacrifice animals and children on these fires. And so uh, it, it took on a name, and this, this name was known as a bone fire. Because once the fire had gone out, all you would find were ashes and bones. Um, commonly today, we know this as a bonfire. Bonfire. So the, the origins, and please hear me, like, I'm not saying like you're evil if you have a bonfire. Okay, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is it has pagan roots. And so if you've ever had a bonfire... And you have the religious idea of like, if you engage in Halloween, then you're, you're devil, like devil possessed and you're going to go and all that stuff, right? If you've ever been a part of a bonfire, it comes from the same origins. And so I want you to understand that, that it's a pagan background, but culturally bonfires are a time to, to celebrate and roast marshmallows. We no longer burn children. Um, I haven't anyway. And um, I wanted to. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, not mine, of course. Other people's kids. Um, <laughs> I'm getting off track here. No, but uh, so, so we look at bonfire or bone fires, what originated back in Celtic, Gaelic times, and this is another celebration around this Samhain. It was a way of warding off evil spirits. And so it was very common, again, around the same exact time, uh, they used to carve turnips, and they were referred to as jack-o'-lanterns. They began to appear attached to strings on sticks embedded with coal. Later, the Irish tradition switched it to pumpkins. So Samhain blended with a Roman holiday. The Romans took over and, and absorbed the holiday Samhain. And the Romans were already celebrating a Day of the Dead around the same exact time of year. They referred to it as Pomona. And they had their own celebrations. But they merged these two, these two essentially same holidays together. And they picked up each other's traditions. And so the, the Roman holiday Pomona absorbed. And now we have Samhain and Pomona Within a few hundred years, the Catholic Church gets involved. And that's when you know everything just gets better, right? The Catholic Church got involved, and, like, there's peace on earth and goodwill towards man, right? Like, so basically, the Catholic Church gets involved and says, listen, we are celebrating martyrs. And if you don't know what a martyr is, a martyr is someone who is a believer in Christ who dies refusing to renounce their beliefs. They, they die spreading the faith. And, and so they're considered martyrs, and in the Catholic Church, they're considered automatic saints, and so they, they would celebrate these saints by name. But the problem is, as time is going on and persecution is more common, there's not enough days to, to praise and to pray for all the saints. On top of that, they also had days that were dedicated to praying for souls they believe were trapped in purgatory. So purgatory in a Catholic church, which I'm sure probably most of you probably know this, is, is the in-between area between heaven and, and earth. It's if, if uh, awaiting judgment or if... If they were not worthy to go into heaven when somebody passed away, they were believed to be in purgatory. So the Catholics believe that you could pray for them and pray for the dead and pray for the saints and, and, and remember and rejoice about the saints. And, and they did this all year long. But then they got the idea, why don't we condense all of these saints, all of these people, into one or two holidays? And so what they started doing was All Saints Day. And so they began to practice this and have this time of prayer for the dead and, and praying for the saints in May. But then another pope a few uh, hundred years later comes along and says, well, we don't really like Pomona. We don't really like Samhain. Why don't we have our celebration where we pray to the dead and pray for the dead and, and we rejoice about our saints at the same time? And so they said, well, we'll hijack their, their, their celebration. We'll hijack their holiday. And so what was considered by, by pagans and considered today as a holy day with Satanists was hijacked or essentially tried to be hijacked by the Catholic Church. And they, they took over in November 1st and November 2nd became known as All Saints Day and All Souls Day. But what's amazing is all this transition and all this change that happened with these, these two new holidays, they never did anything about the, the way they celebrated Halloween or Back then, Samhain or Pomona. It was left essentially alone to, to do what it was continuing to do. And I, I, I say all this to bring us to the text, and that's in Exodus chapter 32. If you got your Bibles, go ahead and open up to Exodus chapter 32, starting at verse 1. It will be up on the screens. 
If you could, let's stand to our feet just for a reading of the word. You're probably familiar with the story, and I think this can shine some light on where we stand as a culture right now. Exodus 32, starting in verse 1. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, Up! Make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. They thought he was dead. He had been gone for 40 days, and he was up on the mountain with God and having this amazing experience. And meanwhile, they had just come out of Egypt. They, they just come through the Red Sea, and they've seen all these miraculous things, and God's providing, and God's making a way. But now their mediator, the, the one who stood between them and God, the one that was worthy to stand between them and God, has been missing for 40 days. And so we find the, the people down at the bottom of the mountain, and they're coming at Aaron. Uh, yeah, build us gods. Build us something that we can look to as a mediator between us and God, Yahweh. There, there, we, we need something. We don't know what happened to Moses. He's gone. He's been gone. He's probably dead. We need something that we can look to, something that we can pray to as a mediator to, to Yahweh, the, the true God. And so uh, Aaron, uh, being the good pastor that he was at the time, says, Take off the rings of gold that are in the ears of your wives and your sons and your daughters and bring them to me. So all the people took off the rings of gold that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool and made a golden calf. And they said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And he's still referring to Yahweh. Don't get it twisted. He's still referring to Yahweh. He's thinking, listen, Moses isn't here. I, mean, I need to make a decision. And, and to be honest with you, he's under a lot of peer pressure. And so he caves. Because Moses already said that there should be no images, no false idol worship. Moses already made that declaration. God already spoke to him. Was it on tablets yet? No. Had it been spoken? Absolutely. And Aaron knew it. But without Moses there, he caved and he forms this calf made of the gold. He says, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Play, we will talk about in a little bit. And the Lord said to Moses, go down for your people whom you brought up. He doesn't even want to identify with the Israelites right now. You know, when you're mad, you, got, you have kids, right? And like, your son is not listening to me. Like, when you, like your, your daughter, you need to go talk to your daughter. Like, that's what he's doing right now. He's saying, like, Moses, go down for your people, whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way that I commanded them. They have made for themselves a golden calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. He's frustrated. He's a frustrated dad. I identify with that. I know where he's coming from. And so he's calling them out and saying, they're out of line. They're, they've gone sidetracked. You need to get back down there and deal with the situation. This, this text, you guys can be seated and I can be seated. This text, it, it has a much deeper level understanding when it comes to this topic today than I think you probably grasp at first reading. You say, you, you look at everything I just read about Samhain and Pomona. And I haven't gotten to the good stuff yet. Like, actually, I'll get into that really quick. So... In the ninth century, Pope Gregory moved the celebration back into um, October, November, November 1st and 2nd, refers to as All Saints Day or All Souls Day for either day. But neither holiday addressed the issues of what was happening on October 31st. And so the pagans who were becoming Christians were still participating in, in worship of false gods and sacrifices and doing things in a pagan way with a Christian label. Trick-or-treating, it says, have been derived from an ancient Irish and Scottish practice. That means the nights leading up to Samhain or Pomona, they would go out dressed up as ghouls and goblins and demons so that the spirits wouldn't recognize them or attack them, and they would go up to houses and they would sing. And so they believed that their singing would keep the devil spirits away, the demonic spirits and the witches away, and they were rewarded with treats. And so trick-or-treating began by going door-to-door and singing, caroling. I'm not going to get into Christmas right now. But they went door-to-door singing 
And, and they did this to ward off evil spirits. They were rewarded with treats. Now, there was also trickery happening at the same time. And, and at, of course, it's probably the young people, and, and they're probably still just acting the same way young people act today, like fools. And they were doing their thing, but they associated that trickery with, with witches and fairies. And so the people were convinced that if they found something broken or, or just, just destroyed, they would say the, the evil spirits have come out. And so they would pay these people in treats to come and sing to stop the, the tricks from happening. Trick or treat. So this is the origins of trick-or-treating. And everything points back to this holiday. If I didn't tell you anything about Halloween, but I just described uh, Samhain or if I described Pomona, you would tell me, well, that's Halloween. But we're talking uh, 1,800 years ago. This is what they were doing. Dressing up in costumes, going door-to-door, -door, tricking or treating. They were singing, they were, they were worshiping, sacrificing. They, they were, some of them were engaging in things that were demonic and, and praying to evil spirits and, and, and really just engaging in the side that we all think has disappeared since then. But this is the, the core foundation of, of Samhain, Halloween, the pagan roots of the holiday known today as Halloween. And I, I shared this text out of Exodus because it, it's funny how Aaron took what had come out of Egypt. You see that, the gold rings, the, the earrings, all the jewelry that he, he fashioned into his golden calf was from Egypt. It's what the people took on their way out when they were leaving. They took the gold, they took the jewelry. It's what they used to form this. And so they took something from another culture and they formed it into something new and they slapped Yahweh's name on it. They're like, they're here, here, here's... We're going we're gonna to do it because they, they were used to worshiping idols. They were used to worshiping gods. And so they took what they knew, what they were already carrying with them that was in common practice, formed it into something new and said, here, this is our way of worshiping Yahweh now. We're having a feast tomorrow. We're, we're going to do it up. We're going to party like it's 1900. Like that's what they're doing. And, and it's this whole idea of, of taking the Christian for us Christian label and slapping it onto something and thinking that it changes how God sees it. And so this is, uh, point one was the Samhain and general pagan roots and, and, and the history of it. But I want you to understand something. The Catholic Church tried to do something, but they didn't do it very well. It's called whitewashing. And there are some things you simply can't whitewash. And whitewash, in case you're wondering, in this context, it means to, to cover up, to, to try to deny its roots or its history or, or what was spoken about it with a, a veiled attempt. They're, they're whitewashing. They're covering it with a coat of paint. You know when your house has been trashed and you're like, well, just put a fresh coat of paint on. Nobody's going to know. Like that, that's what they did. They took what was known, this pagan ritualistic holiday that had been celebrated for hundreds of years, and they basically said, hey, listen, let's take our earrings and let's form something new out of it, and we're going to slap Yahweh's name on it so it becomes Christian. So it, becomes a, it means that you're a follower of Christ now. It didn't work. The same way the calf wasn't accepted by Yahweh because there was no false idol worship, is the same way when we try to slap Yahweh or God's name or Jesus' name onto something that he considers sin or bad, it doesn't work. So there are things that cannot be whitewashed. Amen? Are you all with me? It's three people. Praise God. That's all I need. That's all I need. The rest of you all can just hear. I'll preach to everybody else. So Aaron says, I'm going to build an altar in front of it. We're going to slap his name on it, and this will be acceptable to God. And clearly we know from reading in Exodus that God wasn't fond of it. He didn't accept it. As a matter of fact, he rejected it, and he wanted to destroy the people. That was his thought. He was, he was so angry. He, he, he just, he's like, listen, he made promises that your nation shall be greater than the stars and the heavens. He said that they will outnumber the, the grain of sand. Like He made all these promises, and he's ready to walk away from them. He's like, I just did all of this, brought you out of this land, set you free, no longer captives to Egypt, split the water so you can walk through on dry ground, and the first thing you do when Moses isn't around is worship a calf. But understand, in their hearts, they thought they were doing what was right. They had good intentions. Have you ever had good intentions that didn't work out very well for you? Like, I, 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 I'm going to make this decision. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to marry that person. I'm going to take this job. And you have the best of intentions until a month in, and they are crazy, or the job is horrible, and the pay is bad. I'll go back to this one. I heard, I heard a smirk. 
they are crazy, that you, you're like, well, they, they look cute, but the cuteness can fade. Well, they, 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 they make good money, but you can lose a job. And you're like, that's, that's husband right now. No, it's not. That's wife. No, it's not. That, that's a great job. This is going to build my career. No, it's not. You're going down the wrong path. And this is what, what was happening. They were, they were seeing this, this holiday back then when the Catholics tried to take it over, and they thought, if we could just put a coat of paint on it, change the name, nobody will ever know. And it works. Can I tell you that it does work? Because Christmas comes from a pagan holiday. I, I don't know if you guys know that. Like, I, I really hate to burst your bubbles if you don't know this. Jesus was not born on December 25th. We celebrate the birth of Jesus. We celebrate the life of Jesus. That's what it has become. Have you ever driven on, on Christmas morning? The roads are empty, and there's just like a peace in the air, and everybody seems happier. Like, it's, it's, that's, it's because it's, regardless if they know it or not, they are celebrating life. Easter, I don't even refer to it as Easter except when it comes to our events. It's Resurrection Sunday. It is the, res the day we celebrate the resurrection of Christ. We celebrate life. But do you understand that Easter comes from the word Ishtar, which was a pagan god that was worshipped? You go back to Nimrod, back in the, the Tower of Babel, and, and how Nimrod became Baal. And he was married to a woman who, whose name who ended up becoming Ishtar. Like, there's so much pagan roots in these things. But for me, it's not about bunnies, and it's not about candy or eggs. It's about the resurrection of Christ. We celebrate that, that we are redeemed and bought by the blood of Jesus. And we celebrate that he gave his life for us on the cross. That's what Resurrection Sunday is all about. Do we call it Easter? Yeah, you wanna know why? Because people outside of this don't know anything else. And if we say Resurrection Sunday, they think we're nuts. And so we candy coat it. We whitewash it. We say Easter. Why? Because it allows them to come in to experience the love of God. You see, a holiday that has pagan roots brings life. It's a celebration of life. Easter, Resurrection Sunday, Christmas, the celebration of his life. He was probably born in the spring sometime. Nobody knows. I know it wasn't December 25th. That works all around the pagan holiday, celebrating the winter solstice. And literally gets into like the 12 days of, of worship and, and, and how we get 12 days of Christmas from pagan roots. This is not a Christian thing. Just the Catholics hijacked it. And we're like, okay, that works. But see, I don't, I, I, at this point in time, I don't have a problem with Christmas. I don't have a problem with Easter and, and resurrection. See, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. The problem is that about six years ago, we started studying this stuff. And we were like, but, but, but we are still doing the same things they were doing 1,800 years ago. And so we had to come to a decision, my wife and I, as a family. And we've never tried to judge anybody. Like, because guess what? When we first moved down to Florida, well, like the first like two years, our kids were dressed up. It's what I grew up doing. Every year, I was either, I was either Superman or I was a vampire. And why? Because I, I had hair, I could slick back, I pulled off the vampire, and I was a huge fan of Superman. And so I would, that's what I dressed up as. And, and I'm telling you, like, I'm not saying that there's, there's nothing inherently evil about costumes. My son was running around here in a costume a couple weeks ago, not for, for Halloween, because he got really hooked on Spider-Man, and so I bought him a Spider-Man costume. He didn't take it off for three days. He's not possessed. He's a child. There's nothing inherently evil about, about masks and, and dressing up. There's nothing inherently evil about pumpkins or carving pumpkins even. It's a pumpkin. But what's, what's, what's not good about, about Samhain and about, about Pomona, the, the roots of, of, of Halloween, is that it comes from this pagan background of worshiping false gods, demonic spirits, and all these things are still continuing. It's just they've been whitewashed. And so ultimately, at the end of today's service, like, I'm not going like, to do like a, a, a test. I'm like, okay, who, who's going to keep worshiping you know, the devil tomorrow? Like, I'm not doing that. But what I'm saying is, is like, you, I need to open your eyes to at least some to knowledge. I have to give you some information. I, you want to know why? In all honesty, not even for you. Like, God's going to judge me one day. And he put me in this position, and somebody had the audacity to ask me this question. And so now I have to answer it. That this is the history of Halloween. And not much has changed. 
I, I, I know, and, and I started going through my head, like, what are some of the questions that are going to be asked? And or what are some of the comments I might hear? Well, I don't engage in that. I don't, I don't do that demonic stuff. Like, my kids dress up as a princess and, like, as a toad. And we, we go to our friends' houses, and we go to our family's houses, and we have some candy, and, and that's it. Like, we're not, we're not engaging in anything demonic or evil. It's just where we're going. And, and I, I, I expected those questions, or at least those thoughts, because it's the same thoughts I had. But here's the thing, and, and this is what my question was for point three. What is the big deal? What is the big deal of, of going out and getting some free candy and, and coming home and, and just having a fun evening? Nothing. There, there, it's not a big deal to do that. You do it any other night of the week, any other part of the year, it's not a big deal. What makes it a big deal is the traditions and the rituals that have created what we do today. You see, it, it's, and you can, I understand, like, we're always like, oh, it's, it's so cute, I dress my kids up. But do you want to know what I started doing after I turned 15? I wasn't trick-or-treating, but I was still celebrating Halloween. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. It was parties. It was, after 21 for me, it was drinking. Still dressing up in costumes. Still, still, still living that life and having fun. And it was innocent. It was innocent. We even did Ouija boards. Why? Because it was silly. It was silly. They said so we just did it. it and it's amazing how it, it seemed like it was okay. Why? Because everything that in the culture that we are in and have been in have said it's okay. It's not a big deal. And I guarantee right now, and I'm okay with this, there's people right now thinking like, wow, he's such a religious spirit. He's got such a religious spirit because I have convictions. I might be wrong. God might be like, it's not a big deal. It's a, it's a holiday. It's not a big deal. I'd rather err on the side of, of this. I would rather err on the side and not worship the golden calf. I would, I would rather be on the, the side of error and be like, oh, wait, I could have dressed up this entire time. I'm okay. Than to find out that I was engaging in something that was against God. And here's the thing. I'm not even saying that we do it maliciously. I'm not saying that we do it maliciously. But, but I want to give you a scenario before we go into a little illustration I have, okay? Um, if you were to see me, and I, I, wasn't gonna, I wasn't sure if I was going to share this, but then Andy read it. I was like, that has to be confirmation. I'm going to share it. So I'm going I'm to share the story. The, not a story because that implies that it's true. This ain't true. But it's, it's, an, it's something for you to grasp your, your, your head around. Um, if you were driving down the street at 9 o'clock at night, and you saw me walking out of a strip club, how would you guys feel about that? Pastor. Oh, I, there's people in the church that would, what are you doing, Pastor? I mean, they would, I, there's people in the church that would rip me a new one. They, they would just do this. They would do that, I'm telling you. But, but what would that do? It would, it would destroy my career. I, 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 would be, I would be removed from the pastorate. I no, I mean, no church would probably ever touch me if that. I mean, that's what's happening. Like, the sexual immorality in churches nowadays, like, like people falling and doing all these, these crazy things. Like, if that were to happen to me, like, you guarantee I wouldn't have this job anymore. And I could try to, like, try to, like, move away and do things. But it would, it would stick with me. But what if you came and you caught me walking out of the strip club at 9 o'clock at night? And I said, no, 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 no. You don't understand. The wings here are amazing. It's, it's 10 cents a wing tonight. Like, I'm not, I, listen, I don't even look at the girls. I'm not, I'm not, I don't care about that. Like, I, I don't, I, I'm here for the wings. They have these banging wings. You don't understand. Like, and, and I'm not even like trying to make any, what if that was the truth? That I was there, that I, I paid no attention to the girls, no attention to what was happening behind me. I sat at my table eating my wings and then I got up and left. Would that change anything for you? No. Why? Because I, I shouldn't be putting myself in that atmosphere to begin with. Regardless if my intentions are good and I'm just there for a good old wing. That's it. All I want is a wing. I'm not. <laughs> I just, I don't know if that was like to let like the connection over here. But I'm like, all I want is a wing. That's all I'm looking for. Would that change anything for you? No, of course not. Because I'm putting myself in a situation with something that is not good for me. 
And this is, this is I, I, I want to use that illustration as I bring forward my, my boy, Nate. Come here, buddy. I've been planning this illustration for like a month. Had no idea why I'd work it into the sermon, but I'm like, I, I got it now. I, I got this. You know, it's, I, I've met so many people and, you know, the conversation inevitably comes up this time. Can you stand like right down here in front of me, actually? You can back up a little bit. Face me, though. Face me. You can put the glasses on. For those of you who don't know, the glasses that he is wearing right now are basically blacked out. Like, how many fingers do I have up? No idea, right? It's, it's basically blacked out. And it's funny because I, I, I've been preparing this about the dangers of, of not being able to see clearly. Not understanding the dangers that are around you. And how there's times our, our eyes think they see something coming, but they really don't. You see, I, do I think that, that if your kids go trick-or-treating that like they're, there's demon spirits going to attach themselves to you? Probably not. But is it a possibility? Read some of the articles of Satanists who are furious that Christians celebrate Halloween because it's their holy day. Let that sink in for a moment. Satanists are mad at some of us, not because we worship Jesus, but because on one of their most important nights, their holy night, we are celebrating with them. That, that, I mean, that's, that's, that's a terrifying concept. And so we had to come to terms and we, we studied and we looked into it and our conscience came to a place where we said, we're not going to do this next year. And it was awkward. Can I be real with you? Like everybody neighborhood dressing up, everybody's going out. My kids are like just old enough where they understand what time of year it is. And we were like, we're not going to do this. We're going we're gonna to go out. We're going to go, we're going to go to the mall because nobody's going to be at the mall, right? We're going to go there and it's going to be, it's going to be quiet. No, we get to the mall and there's like seven foot tall, like goblins walking down the thing. And my girls are, even now they'd be terrified, but they were even smaller. And they're, they're looking up at these monsters walking by and they're like, what are we doing? And we went to this arcade and we're like, let's just go in there. We're going to let the kids play for an hour. Let's just, you know, get out of the, the main walkway. And we walk in, the place was deserted. One employee working, this it's the Soto Mall. If you guys have been there, this little arcade in there. And we walk in and we're like, okay, well, at least we don't have to deal with the people out there. You know, we're, we're isolated, we're secluded. And all of a sudden, while we start playing, we realize in the background is, is Christian worship music playing. And we just looked at each other like, we were supposed to be here. Like we felt like in, in the midst of like, craziness and our own insecurities about are we doing the right thing or people going to think we're nuts like god gave us like a little shelter a place where we knew like i got you but it's funny for, for years now i'm going to give you a task you ready for this nate it's, it's going to be complicated can you see the ball can you see it at all no if i threw it at you right now would you be able to smack it away i'm not going to throw it hard but if i lobbed it at you could you like maybe smack it with your hand no Put your hand up, up a little bit higher, more towards your face, right there. Okay. See, most, most, most of us approach life like this. Like, oh, Halloween's coming up. I'm not gonna engage in seances. I'm gonna let my kids trick or treat, but only houses that I know. So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna protect our family that way. You're doing a great job, by the way, stopping those balls. You know, we, we, we go to parties. And here's the thing. We use our freedoms as Christians and the label Christian to excuse behaviors that are not becoming of a Christian. And so the Halloween party comes down. All of a sudden, y'all ladies that be wearing dresses down here are now dressed up as cats. And somehow, like, cats apparently are just, like, promiscuous, I guess. I don't know. But, like, all of a sudden, it's an excuse to dress differently than you would normally dress. And man, like you don't ever drink, but you go to a Halloween party and everybody's drinking. And it's like, well, it's a big deal. It's just a party. And you drink more than you would have all year long. And so we use our freedoms as an excuse to engage in behaviors that are not becoming of a Christian. And so we go to parties and we start thinking, it's not a big deal. My kids are only five and six. It's not going to affect them. All of a sudden they become nine, 12 and, and 13 and 14 and 15. And all of a sudden your daughter wants to start wearing stuff. And you're like, no, that's, that's way too high. And oh, I got one through. 
and, and, and you try to deflect and you try to, you try to block as many as you can. Okay, right, I'm going to throw two with you, Nate. I want you to really try to stop these balls. I'm, I'm serious, okay? Put both hands up. I'm going to try to hit you. And I, want, I want you guys, I want, I want you to stop the balls from hitting you. Do you understand me? Like, don't let this ball hit you. It means death for you. Like, you will die. You'll be in purgatory if you're a Catholic. Do you understand me? All right, are you, are you ready? Like, don't get hit. Ready? Okay, on three. I'm even tell you when it's coming. On three. Ready? One, two, three. That was more than just two balls, wasn't it? There it is. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's amazing how we think we can guard ourselves to things that we think we can see, but there are so many more things out there trying to get you than what you realize. And sometimes engaging in behaviors that you're trying to block yourself in the front, you're allowing things in your back that can hurt you. Certain behaviors and certain thinking patterns. You see, listen, I'm not going to tell you that Halloween is evil and Halloween is wrong. I gave you the history of Halloween. I gave you the pagan roots of it. Research it for yourselves. But this is the conclusion that we came to as a family. It's not a celebration of life. It's a celebration of death. It's, it's, it's acknowledging, praising, partying with death, with demons. Like, so as innocent as we think it is, as innocent as we think it is to, to stand in front of a golden calf and even, even build an altar and worship and sacrifice to it, it doesn't mean that God accepts it because we slapped the Christian name on it. It doesn't change how God views it. And so this is something you all have to come to terms with. Your conscience has to decide what you're going to do about this. But can I, 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 I gotta give you a disclaimer again. You see, your conscience can taste something that's okay and make it not okay. Your conscience cannot taste something that is not okay and make it okay. It doesn't work that way. It's a one-way street. And so if you've thought for years, like, it's not a big deal. My kids love it and it's traditions and we do this and I, I decorate the house and it's terrifying and it's scary and we watch these movies and it's not a big deal and it's not a big deal, you might be missing how big of a deal it might actually be that it might be having more of an effect on you than you realize. I had to rebuke some of the stuff I watched as a kid. Evil, demonic things, possessions, and all these things, like things that stuck with me. I had to rebuke them. Isn't it funny how this time of year is when all the demon movies come out? All, all the, the haunted houses are coming out? And, and I'm sorry, but even trunk or treats, like the, we, it's supposed to be like a Christian safe place, but the trunk or treats have trunks that are dressed up in ghouls and ghosts and goblins and spider webs. How is it any different? It's not. It's not any different. It's the same thing. We're slapping a Christian name on it. And putting, handing out tracts. Like, praise God. But do we have to engage in behavior? Do we have to go into the strip club? Do we have to go into the bar? Do we have to go into the places of sin to hand out a track? Or is it just an excuse to justify behavior? I, I, I'm just, this is the conclusion I came to. And, and, and you all have to do the same thing. It's just, it's a challenge of it. And this is what you'll find. Either people are like dead set against it and they're like, you're going straight to hell if you celebrate it. And other people are like, it's not a big deal. I can do what I want to do. I have freedom. I'm, I'm set free by Christ. I'm not worried about demons. Demons can't hurt me. And so they're convinced they can engage in behaviors that probably aren't best for them. And, and us, we found ourselves in the middle. That, a kid dressing up as a princess. Let me clarify. A girl dressing up as a princess. It's not a big deal. It's not. A boy dressing up as Spider-Man, it's not a big deal. But when we start to engage in behaviors that don't just kind of look like, but actually mirror almost perfectly pagan holidays that celebrated evil spirits, they were all about sacrificing and, and festivals and, and all these, this evilness, and nothing has really changed except for one thing. It's become a billion dollar industry. It's the second biggest holiday that we celebrate behind Christmas. Billions. $400,000 on pet costumes alone. Like, I mean, just, do you think they want it to go away? Do you think that our, our culture wants it to go away? Of course not. It's an excuse. It's, it's a moneymaker. It's everything that the world longs for. 
But here's the thing. Since when does God care about our, our good intentions? Since when does God care if our heart's in the right place, if we're still doing the wrong thing? And when it comes to this specifically, when it comes to this holiday and it comes to the, being in, involved in it, God says you are to be holy as I am holy. See, to be holy means to be set apart. You are to be set apart the way that I am set apart. You will have no gods before me. You will not worship false idols. I am set apart. I am above that. In the same way I am above that, you are above that. You are elevated over the world. You're separate from the world. Yeah, you're in it. Leave right now. There's 500 houses on the way back to your place. I guarantee it. But you are called to be in the world, but not of the world. You are holy. You are set apart. And our behavior, our character has to reflect that. And so everything I have to say here, this is what I want to leave you with. God loves you. And if you've been celebrating every single year, and this is like your favorite holiday, like I'm not saying you're evil. I'm not saying that. Please hear me. That's not my heart. I celebrated for 25 years. What I'm saying is that it might be more dangerous than we realize. And that there's a good chance that God does not want us celebrating this holiday. You hear me? And why? Because he loves you. He loves you. I would love to, I would love to see our faces. Could you imagine being dressed up as a demon or a ghost or a goblin or you know something something like that and then Christ returns? Try explaining that one. Well, Jesus, everybody was doing it. Everybody was dressing up. The, the, the church I go to said it's okay. That's no excuse because the word of God is available to you. The, the spirit of God speaks to you, or at least it should be speaking to you, or at least you should be hearing it. There is no excuse. I appreciate you, brother. Try to walk back with the glasses. There, there, there we go. Just watch the fire, please. I don't know if we're covered in that insurance. Was. Amen. Did you enjoy today's message? I really hope, like, it... Oh, it I, I, I want to make this, this clear. Um, my, it's seriously not my heart to offend anybody. It's really not. I like being liked, right? Who doesn't like being liked? Like, I like being liked. Unfortunately, sometimes the word of God and sometimes the convictions that we will have can be offensive. Most often, truth is offensive. And I hope you hear my heart behind this. I, I wouldn't be sharing this if I if I didn't have a serious concern about it. And so this is my challenge. When you leave this place, do, what, do whatever you plan on doing tomorrow. I'm not going to tell you like, oh, don't do it. Like, no, pray, read the word of God. But understand that if you do have little ones like these guys, they're looking to you for guidance. They're looking to you for protection. They're looking to you for, for spiritual maturity, to make decisions that might not be popular, but might be necessary. And so as we go into this time, I, I know a bit, kind of, yeah, yeah, kind of. Well, no, I didn't know all that. No, I knew, I, okay. So I'm shocked, thank you. Um, I knew, they were, I knew you guys were coming up, though. That's about the extent of my knowledge. Um, yeah, I, but I want to pray. Got it? I want to pray. I want to pray for you guys. The, the truth is, like, most of us have already made up our minds about life and how we're going to live, but they have a whole future ahead of them. And I don't know if you realize it, but there is power up here and there is anointing up here, and there is future up here, and there is preachers, and there's singers, and there's, there's businessmen and businesswomen. Our future is up here. So I'm gonna pray for us, I'm gonna pray for you guys, and then I'm gonna let you do whatever you're doing. 
I appreciate it. But Father, thank you for this church. Thank you for your word. Thank you for, for the truth. Lord, that your spirit can remove scales from eyes and open deaf ears and allow us to hear your word. And Father, for our little ones up here and the, the blessings that they are, Lord, I pray just favor over their lives. That they would be guided and guided well, that they would be raised up in, in families that are passionately in love with you, Jesus. That they would be set apart. That they would go places and, and kids would try to get them to do things that are not of, of Christian character. And they'd be like, no. They try to get them to do things or be somebody that they're not. And their response wouldn't just be a, a hesitation, but just a solid, no. Do you know who I am? Do you know my father? That they would know their identity in you, Christ, above anything else. So, Lord, use this church. Lord, use us to be a blessing, to glorify your name. And, Lord, I just pray for anointing over these children. You fill them with your spirit. We ask these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. We didn't want the month of October to leave us without us showing a little bit of appreciation to our pastor. Um, since this is the month of appreciation for our pastors, and we just want to let him know how much we love him and appreciate all the hard work that he does day and night, not just studying God's word, but also praying for us and being for us when we need him. So we're going to start here with um, Scotty. P is for preacher God called you to be. A is for anointing God gifted you to minister with his leading. S is for the shepherd appointed to lead God's flock. T is for the teacher in you studies and shares God's word. 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 O is for obedient heart of compliant submission to him. R is for the righteous by which you live and are blessed. Pastor, thank you for being true to the world. Word. 2 Timothy 4, 2, 8 says, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, repute, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. In doctrine, henceforth though there is laid up for you a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give you at the day. And not you only, but unto all them that love is a prayer. Pastor, thank you for reflecting Jesus. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before me that they may see your good work and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Pastor, thank you for being a blessing. Genesis 12, 2. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. The children have a song that they want to dedicate to you.
Okay, at this time, the children want to present Pastor with some gifts. If he will come up. I Gabriel. thought I was done. Okay, Gabriel. Gabriel. For me, buddy. Thank you. Give him a hug. Give me a hug. Can I have a hug? You got <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. Thank you. Yeah, I am and so And the reason find, he found out about today was because he snuck into my classroom. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are just sneaky. You have my own children lie on me. Like, oh, we just love this song. We just want to, I heard it from a first grader. Is, is that what, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Thank you guys, seriously. Um, uh, there's no greater way, I think, to finish up this service than to do a time of communion together. Amen? Um, to, to celebrate what Christ did for us. Now, that is the greatest appreciation we can show the ultimate pastor is to remember him in everything that we do, especially during this time. And so what I love to do is I'm going to call forward our, our elder for this week and our deacons. You guys are amazing, by the way. Can we give them a clap praise? Thank you guys so much. Next time, let me know. I'll, I'll get up here and dance with you. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. Um, what I want to do is uh, you can stand to your feet, and we're going we're gonna to come forward to receive the elements. If you came prepared to give today, thank you so much. Uh, for those of you who have given uh, towards Pastor, Appreci Pastor Appreciation Month this month, um, thank you guys so much. I, I, I really can't tell you how much that means to me. Um, it it makes me very happy, and uh, I appreciate that. My wife and I, our family, appreciates that. Um, if you need prayer, uh, we're going to have our prayer team up here to the left, and uh, they, will, they will pray with you. They will intercede for you. You can even keep praying like while, while this is happening, while everything's going on. Our altars are always open. If you need prayer, you just want to come forward. But um, uh, you may come forward now to receive the elements.
Before I dismiss, I um, just want to let you know, uh, obviously our next event coming up is next week, Fall Festival. We have a sign up in the lobby. Uh, we already have so many people signed up and we can always use more. And so if you want to serve at the event, please sign up. Uh, we did have a slight change of plans. Uh, we were going to order uh, barbecue for the event. Instead, we've decided, because it's cheaper, to, um, to make the barbecue. And so uh, Doug and Robin have both uh, offered to cook the, the meat for us, and I'm so appreciative of you guys. And um, absolutely. And their pulled pork is just amazing. And so uh, I'm excited about that, but we do need some help with uh, sides and things like that. And so if you are able to, if you're willing to stick around for a few minutes after we dismiss, um, we'll talk about uh, serving for the fall festival. We also have a sign up out there for our Thanksgiving uh, banquet that we have. Uh, hopefully you guys will sign up for that. We'll have, we're going to take care of the turkeys. Please hear me. We are going to take care of the turkeys. I feel like that's needed one more time. No, not to praise. Not to, I'm not saying like that. I'm saying like because somebody always brings an extra turkey. We are going to take care of the turkey. I just need you guys to sign up for sides. And by sides or desserts, I mean like it says like what side or dessert do you want to bring? Preferably you'll write down like what side or dessert it is instead of just saying dessert or side. That doesn't help us. So if there's, if there's a sign up out there. Go ahead and sign up for, uh, for the Thanksgiving for our fall festival. We also have our small group starting up in just a few months. And so come January, we're launching out. We have three small groups right now, potentially four. My goal is to have anywhere from six to seven small groups ready to launch out in January. And so if you want more information about that, please stick around. But I want to dismiss you with this. Um, and when I say dismiss, it doesn't mean get up and leave and run out and, and, and do what you got to do. It means uh, you are now free to talk amongst yourselves. Amen? So I want to dismiss you with this. Go now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit knowing that his grace is abundant and his love is endless. And if you look, you will find yourself right in the middle of both. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and we ask all the favors upon us that we've spoken out today. All of God's people said, amen, amen and amen. God bless you. Invite somebody to church next week. We will see you Saturday from 3 to 6, Fall Festival. Unless you're serving, then you're going to be coming in earlier. But stick around. We'll talk more about that. Amen? Amen.